Hello and welcome, my name is Ajax Post and you join me today for a very first look at a brand new game. It's called Circle of Kurzovan and uh, first off I do have to say a huge thank you to Andre from the team at Kurzovan who I believe are a Swiss development team, I think so, anyway, but wherever, somewhere in, in Europe anyway, uh, for reaching out to me a week or so ago and saying we're about to launch the Kickstarter for Circle of Kurzovan in the run up to sort of getting the final push of development done for the early access release. Well, certainly this is how I understand it anyway. The early access release onto Steam of the game. Now, they are going to be releasing a public demo of the game, which is pretty much, I believe, what I'm playing now. And it is very much in alpha. Uh, so, as you can imagine, lots of things are likely to change as the game goes forward. But yes, thank you to Andre for, for letting me have a play with this for a little while, at least, uh, before it reaches the Kickstarter and Early Access release. What is it, though? What does you do? Well, you are taking the role of a leader who has been delegated by some mysterious empire to build new settlements in remote and unknown corners of the kingdom. In these forgotten places, nature is wild and legends are more real and vivid than one may think. Yeah, you can see there's some sort of backstory here, isn't there, to this whole thing. We're going to experience the challenges of different seasons and climates in a world where every animal and every plant tries to find their place in nature. How much will you share with nature? Will you strive for balance or enforce the extinction of certain animals? Follow the old paths or find your own? So I think this is, this is one of the, 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 the interesting things I'm, I'm finding about the game so far is it's, it's not just a settlement builder in a delightful, uh, delightfully realised world, but the whole of nature is alive, as it were, and your choices could impact on what that nature looks like going forward. So we'll see, in fact, every animal is simulated. I, I'm not sure about plants. I mean, they don't move around, but they do regrow and stuff. So I imagine plants are living as well. So a bit like the real world. If we put concrete highways down everywhere, then we tend to lose a lot of our natural environment in the process. So how will we do in Circle of Kozovan? So before we head off into the gameplay itself, a quick rundown of some of the key features which make this game particularly interesting and unique. In addition to the uniquely deep simulation of nature, where we have complex interdependence, interdependence of humans in the natural world, we'll also be managing simultaneously the acquisition, refining and distribution of resources on multiple maps across different climates. We'll see a bit of that as we go through uh, the presentation today. Um, but obviously it's going to be more realised as we go through development of the game. We need to manage, obviously, the, sit the needs of our citizens. They, ha they are alive and have a specific home, workplace and unique needs. Animals equally are looking for food. They get thirsty and sleepy. They have social groups. They also need to find their place in nature. How are we going to impact on the wildlife? And we'll see the seasons and climatic con con conditions are beautifully realised in this low-poly world. We'll be interacting and trading with other factions. And now, one thing I'm not going to show you because I'm terrible, absolutely awful at building worlds. But there is already, in this alpha build of the game, a world builder so you can create your own maps and scenarios within it I might show you a quick peek at the editor itself but I won't be doing much in it because as I've said I am rubbish at creating worlds so what are we going to see what I'm going to do first I think is I'm going to let the game start up which gives you a little bit of a, a background intro to the environment and then we'll get into the gameplay itself. So, on the other side of this quick, sexy video fade, let's get into the Circle of Kurzovan.
And so there we have it, a quick little bit of backstory about an empire which is growing and prosperous and developed and now everyone is struggling to find space to be themselves. Quite how that plays out in the game, I don't know. I haven't got that far. I don't even know if it's actually built into this alpha demo version of the game as yet. We will find out, presumably, in due course. But let's crack on into the game itself. Now, what I'm going to do, because uh, some things take a little while to develop, I'm going to start off in the first steps of creating my basic settlement. Then I'll skip forward a bit to some of the other interesting facets of the game, which I have so far discovered. So let's start a brand new game. Uh, is, is that the name 1012 or is that the date? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it is 1012, the advisor to the landlord. Good, you are here. You probably already heard we want to develop the huge Kosovan region. This may surprise some, especially since our territory holds only a small population and thus hardly any taxes. And especially that region is almost deserted. Okay. Well, we must see the situation of the entire empire, the north and south. We're seeing rapid growth. It becomes more and more difficult for the common people. Oh, those common people. Farms are being cut up smaller and smaller by real division. Taxes remain the same or even increase. And new land can only be gained to a limited extent by clearance or by developing less optimal areas. Even among the nobility, there are more and more descendants who are not entitled to inherit. Good job too, says I. I think you see where I'm going with this. We may be one of the largest countries in the empire, yet we are insignificant. But it doesn't have to be that way. Okay. I want you to develop the Kosovan region. region, be wise and make sure that the people lack nothing. New settlers will come in from different regions of the empire, bringing with them different customs and ideas. Ooh, I say. Treat them with openness and decency, so that they prefer to live with you rather than elsewhere. Your first gold, gold, your first goal even, will be to build a community centre, spelt in the American way. Um, I suppose I have to forgive them, mm, grumble, <laughs> to consolidate your position in the region. For this you will need a lot of wood, stone and other materials. Take care of your supplies because the summer is over quickly. Oh, I say, good luck. Sarah, And here we are. I'm going to pause this. Thankfully, the space bar is the pause and unpause key. Something I'm very grateful to every developer that does that. Oh, look at this. This is bright. <laughs> very, very... It's almost Ajax post-orange, isn't it? So, uh, where are our settlers? Uh, there they are. Yeah, we can get in quite close to them. They're walking around. And you see, yeah, th this is a wheat field. Yeah, this is a that's grass, that's a bush, that's trees, a conifer. Uh, that, that's another bush. Uh, what's that? That's fruits. And we've got fruits and vegetables here. Yeah, it's all scattered across the environment. And we do. Oh, yes, we do have a stockpile of stuff already. Yes, I, I'm not sure. I haven't yet found. But then I didn't look through the key bindings that much, to be honest with you. If there's a home key as such to take you back to wherever you are. Um, but what you can do is if you go to your people, your faction list up here, you can click on a person like, say, Sylvia. And you can follow them around so you can see where they are. So if you head off to all weird parts of the map, like, like over here. Can I go over there? Go, go. Let me go over there. Now that I've clicked it, it won't, will it? No. Go. No. Okay, if I do that. <laughs> so I've no idea where my people are. Um, oh, it does. You see, it does work. There you go. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm not sure if you can tell on that map because there's nothing here really apart from a few people and a few storage boxes. So let's go back to Sylvia. Can I find you? There you are. Okay, now again, what I like in this, it's there. There is a tutorial kind of thing, uh, which does introduce you to the game. Uh, but the one thing I like particularly is the way the the game builds up the the basics, the foundation of what you need in a nice series of simple quests. 
like we see here, a forester's stump, a gatherer's stack, st shack, and a straw hut, which is pretty typical, really, for this sort of game. We can minimise that if we want to, and we've got some messages. A new settlement, tired from the long journey, but full of euphoria, oh my goodness me, about the upcoming project. Your group reaches a suitable place for a new start. The goods are secured and surroundings explored. Uh, the first big goal is to build a community centre to consolidate our position in this region. We need to find a well-developed supply of materials and food. And this is just, yeah, that's just saying what we've seen. Good, we've read both of those. So we've got the quests here. Diplomacy and, ooh, these other people. Other settlements, just six and nine people. Okay, now if we get this icon down here, or the M for map key, there you are, M for map, we're the hills, and those are the lakes. Right, so in the lakes there are two factions, Free Farmers and Falheim. Uh, we can go and look at the lakes if we wanted to. Uh, from what I've seen of what the team have posted, I think this map is changing stylistically. But the, uh, that's what you expect, I suppose, at this stage of the game's development. So this this is this sort a of well-built environment, and they're already moving around. Uh, what is it? It's, uh, it's half past six in the morning on Friday in year one, and presumably we're just about to enter spring, summer, autumn, and winter. It looks good, doesn't it? I, I just, I, it does, it does. I like it. I like the look of it. Let's go back to our hills. There we go. A wholly different climate and setup. So, the first thing we want, uh, I'll bring that back so I remember, remember what I'm doing. A forester's stump. So, the building option here. So, we've got buildings for resources, production, community, barriers, and plants. And obviously, we have to go up various levels in development. And we'll see that as we play through. So, we're looking for a forester's stump. And, and you can see there's, there's entry points there. And I think the yellow arrow, the yellow diamond shape, is the main entrance point to it. I think. And we can turn it around and. Yeah, turn it around using R. There's a tab key, but I'll show you that in a moment when it applies to something. And it highlights, or I'll just right click to get rid of it. It highlights all the things these people at the forester's stump, uh, no, the forester's stump, will harvest. So that's uh, all those trees there. Well, I could put them down there, couldn't I? That might be more sensible, because that's quite close to where we are, or there. No, I like, I like, I like it down here. I like it like that. So we'll put you there, turn you around, and drop you in there. Okay, and that's going to be constructed. Uh, we can have someone come and do that job if they're free to do so, so they'll do that, or I can select someone specifically to build this place, but I'm not going to do that. And we've got priority, pause it, low priority, normal or high for the building of it. So we've got that set up. Should we get cracking? Let's, let's get them running. So, and um, One thing that impresses me about this, I normally play games at pause or speed one or two. This game goes up to 20 times, 50 times, 100, and 300 times speed, which is awesome. And that's already built now, isn't it? <laughs> and who is working there? Sil oh, Sylvia! You're doing the chopping down of the wood and stuff. Excellent. Right, so I'll keep it on pause for a second. And uh, we're going to need to build our gatherer's shack. Uh, one, one point on the uh, build menu here is there's this uh, option here, the, the sort of dots, which gives you more information. So you can see here, the forest stump does that, and the building cost is, well, not, nothing much. Ah, but for the gatherer shack, we do need branches and more wood, and it requires these sorts of uh, produce within the air, those sort of raw materials. And it will then deliver those things to our community. So the gatherer's hut. Uh, so we'll get rid of you for a second. Oh, I need you. Uh, gatherer's hut, there you are. So we could put you here. Yeah, there's, there's some... 
the black symbols are where there's nothing to gather, I, I imagine, then. Uh, yeah, I think we'll put you... Because I think we'll build our settlement over here somewhere. So if we build the gatherer shack here... Yeah, that aligned like that. That's good. So we'll get you running. And we want a straw hut or two. So that'll be in community. A straw hut. Okay, now we've seen that the R key rotates it. We also have available to us the tab key, which takes us through different build styles. So a number of buildings will have different styles to them. Um, I trust I quite like the basic ones. <laughs> I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, we'll put you there. Then we can have a bit of a road going along the front. In fact, I'll put two of you down. Okay, because each of you can only take two people. We've got ten people in our community already. Should we speed them up a little bit? There we go. And a bit more. Now, I don't think roads cost anything to build. This is just a mud road. So, if I... I go like that. That's it. I could take that all the way out to the forest of stump. In fact, I could do that, couldn't I? So if we go along here, don't want to remove too much of the the planting that we've got. Actually, there was an option here. Did it say something? Ah, Mud Street. There you are. Yes. Yeah, so if we open that up, go to Mud Street. You can press Alt or control to place roads freely. What does that mean, I wonder? Oh, oh I see. Right. Um, I'm not sure what to do with that. Can I demolish the road? I can demolish the road. That bit there. There you go. That'll do. Cool. So we've got our forester's stump and our gatherer's shack and our straw huts are being built. So we'll just uh, fast forward through. Uh, shall I put another hut down? I will, I think. And we'll put another one down. Here. Like so. So we could have the road going around there, couldn't we? Yeah, we could. Like so. Lovely. So where are we? We're always we're coming up to half past midnight. Uh, where is everybody? Now oh, they're, they're sleeping on the ground because I haven't built the straw huts yet. They're sheep. Looking for food. And what I've discovered is that the sheep and the uh, European hares and various other creatures will actually target my supplies as well. What's that? Uh, you're quite happy, are you? You're a raccoon. Oh, that's nice. Oh, have I got another new message? I had a dream. Hang on, I'll come back to that symbol in a second. You remember seeing a forest spirit. The creature seemed friendly and looked calmly in your direction. As time passed, more and more animals gathered around its side. Some lay down and fell asleep. Others looked curiously in your direction. Then you woke up to the noise of the morning. Ah. Oh. Okay, this forest spirit. Is that a thing? No, no. Okay. Right, this symbol here, I believe, means that this sheep here is eating my food. I think that's what that symbol means. There's no sort of uh, tooltip for it. And there are quite a few icons I've seen so far, which I don't quite understand the purpose of. But I'm sure that will be explained as the, as, as the game goes through. Our supplies are shown under the uh, faction information here. So that's our population. Oh, we can see their needs here as well. They need clothes and somewhere to live. Wet protection from the weather, which is what the straw hut will do. We have a working schedule, which I've not played with yet, so I'm not quite sure how significant that's going to be. Our storage, this is what we currently have stored. No rough rags, so basically no clothes. Uh, ten wool, is that what that symbol is? And we have 743 water. Okay. Now, some interesting mechanics going on here. In that, that, that appears to be our supplies. 
but it's also telling you what food you have in Mega Jewels. Which, yeah, Mega Jewels is a thing, but I'm not quite sure how that works in the con within the concept of this game. It says, depending on heat and activity, a person needs about 10 millijoules a day, or megajoules rather, a day. We've got 170. Does that mean we've got 170 per person? Or I'm not entirely sure. And fodder. We have raw meat and cereal grains. Okay, the gathering hut should help with that. And we have 743 water. Lovely. Uh, 36 of basic resources. That's nice. And the census. We can see the population on this map of all the different critters that live here. From deer to trout to rats to humans and to test humans as well. Hmm. Wonder what the difference is between test and real humans. Oh, we've got our straw hut built. Excellent. So we've now got another set of quests. A primitive stone masonry a hand mill, baker's oven, firewood and fireplace. All pretty much par for the course in this sort of settlement building game. So we'll let them carry on building that. Uh, we'll just have a quick look at these. So that is the primitive stone masonry. And uh, we have some rocks and stuff up here. So we could put you down there. Do we have a tab item on this? No, you're always the same. That's good. Uh, hand mill. That'll be production, won't it? So that is... That will take the corn and produces uh, flour. And we'll put you down here somewhere, perhaps. Yeah, near our storage area. Look at, look at all these animals stealing my resources. It really is not on. So we'll put the... Actually, if I put you there, we will have a simple oven, a firewood, and so on. Okay, so that's all built. That will be built and developed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... Fa well, I'm not going to fast forward. I'm going to switch now into a previous save game where I put things in a similar place. So some placements might be a bit different, as you'll see, but uh, that's not important. <laughs> the important is how the game works. So we'll move on into, uh, into a, a later stage of the development of my settlement. Can't rename it, can I? Oh, you can rename things, by the way, if, if you felt like it. Like, this is the first hut we built. I could rename it. I could call it hut number one. Yeah. Well, you don't see that there. It is a straw hut. But if you go into it, you'll know what it is. Can I rename people? Who are you? Jin. Can I, I can rename you. I could call you... Ajax. Yay! That's good. That's nice. I like that. I like being able to personalise my games in, in in mostly cosmetic ways, but they help me feel like it's me. It's mine. It all belongs to... Anyway, sorry. Let's stop waffling. Get on and have a look at more of the game. See you on the other side of this quick, sexy video effect. So we've moved on a pace. And as you can see, the settlement has developed somewhat. As I said, buildings are in a slightly different place. Uh, we've now got a sawmill to turn our raw wood into planks. We've got a rudimentary tailor doing rudimentary tailoring. And uh, we've got an oven. We've got a, uh, a quill. A quill. A hand mill. We also have a fireplace for the cooking of food and stuff. Which is all very nice. Uh, I've just got one person working there. I haven't yet had any... Uh, babies as yet no children so far uh, I, th I think that's part of the game mechanic oh look there's a what are you oh you're a raccoon and you're just going out for a quick walk oh, that's nice <laughs> yes. uh, I, th I think children are part of the game but we will get immigrants slowly but we will have people asking to join our community something else that you may notice here in the top left we're now at two and that's because we have met the basic needs of at least one of our settlers. Uh, in fact, we've met the needs of two of them. So I've met the clothes and shelter needs of uh, Simon and Andre. Uh, the others are getting there. But now they're at level two, uh, they need more. They need a community centre. And what that means is once your settlers go up a level, then you have access to 
higher level buildings and resources and so on. Uh, like a hunter's hut, which we could do with building. Perhaps that might be good. Um, but we're waiting for our community centre to be built, which is the main thing at this first stage of the game, to get built. Uh, as you can see, it requires a lot. Well, I want it to be high priority. Stop that. <laughs> it needs to be built. It needs a lot of uh, raw material to build it and a lot of uh, workers' effort. And what I, One thing I've, I've discovered, I think, is don't put anyone on the construction job uh, because that person might be doing something else. In fact, I have a suspicion everyone does have a job. Yes, in fact, some people like Andre have two jobs. Yeah. But if you set it to vacant, then people will come along and do that as and when they can. Uh, your, your people's occupation or their activity level here is highlighted here in the, in the basic population here. So they're doing one job and they're working 100% of the time, I think. Uh, this is why I put Simon on construction because he's only working 74% of the time. This is how I read it anyway. I may be getting that entirely wrong. So as I was saying, it takes a while for that community centre to be built. But just, just look, doesn't it look wonderful here as we're going into late evening? As you know, this is early morning. The, the, the sun's coming up. Yeah, I mean, the, the colour, the, the, the colours, the visuals, the landscape are very nicely done. Very nicely done indeed. Right, so we, I say we're getting there now. But what I want to do is skip forward to when this community centre is ready to be built. So another quick video effect and we'll be just a moment away from complete completion of our community centre. Here we are, community centre is... all the work has been done. So we are waiting on our rough rag to be delivered. And that should then complete the building of our community centre and more exciting things become available to us. At this stage of the game, I'm slightly concerned that my population is a bit short of food. Yes, very short of food, in fact. And we've got three megajoules there and 15 megajoules there, which is a lot, lot less than we came in with. So I'm wondering if we should start doing something else like hunting. So we've got a hunter's hut here. We are quite a big building. If we tab through you. Uh, no, is that just the one? Or is it just the one type of, of hunter's lodge? Oh, it's been built. The community centre has been built and I missed it. Gosh darn it. And we have one person wishing, wishing to join us, which is nice. So if we click on you, uh, possible immigrants, but having built our community centre, we can send our exped expeditions to other territories and establish diplomatic relations with other groups. And then we can trade goods with other territories over the marketplace. Excellent. Possible immigrants. Uh, we've got... Yeah, we've got six straw huts, so we've got room for two settlers. And there's only, only one wants to come in. Oh well, one's better than none, so we'll accept you. And we now have... 11 people in our settlement. Awesome. Uh, so we need to discover the tablelands. Now there's a slight baguette in this current build of the demo, as far as I can see, in that if you send out your expedition to somewhere, like I did here, I'm good, this, this I know is the mountains. So I'm a bit of a spoiler there, that's the mountains. So that could be the tablelands. This could be desert, but yeah, I'm going to send them there anyway, just in case that is the table lands. <laughs> but if I send them there, I save the game, close the game, and then come back in and load up that save, uh, this is stuck. And they don't seem to go back to con complete the expedition. Um, so you may need to complete your expedition if you're playing the demo. You may need to complete that within the one play session at least and not try and do it over a couple of saves. So if I go out there, so they will do that. Okay, now we want to, I want to build a hunter's lodge or hunter's hut, whatever they called it. 
We could build a barn, but we're not. No, we're going to build a hunter's hut. Now we're going to put you. Um, oh, in this. Now you can't really tell where he's going to hunt, can you? There's a deer there. I assume he will hunt that. Does the help tell me? A hunter's hut. To track and gut animals can be an enormous income of food and resources, but it may influence the balance of nature if you scale it too high. Again, it requires quite a lot of raw materials, but I'm going to build it because we, we, like, we like hunting. It's what primitive man did, and I'm going to assume we are primitive. There you are, that's that done. And we're going to make you a fairly high priority, I think. And get the game running at a fair old lick. Oh, look, Simon and Andre. Simon, in particular, is quite close to completing level two, completing their sort of, yeah, second tier. Now, the thing is, the, the game does give hints to this if you go to the help. So it talks about, and this, I love this, I love this in games. You can move them around. It really annoys me, games that don't allow you to do that. I'm sorry, but it does. Yeah, uh, so needs. As it says here, everyone wants something. Uh, not only humans, but animals get hungry. Yeah, we know that. Uh, humans and animals have specific needs. Uh, wolves want to form a pack with a hierarchical order. Others want to form a flock or stay alone. Progression and frustration. If a certain set of needs can be well fulfilled, a new level is reached, i.e. giving people clothes and a place to live, um, which unlocks more advanced needs. Okay, level Lower level needs are less dominant, but get worse the longer they stay unfulfilled. Ignoring lead needs will lead to frustration and regression to a lower tier. Ooh, heck. Lower tiers do not have a strict priority, which is rather weighted against other needs, even if they're in a higher tier. So basically, as long as you're completing, this is how I'm reading it, as long as you're completing a good selection of their various needs, you, sh you should be able to keep them on, on side and not frustrated. So they may have various needs. As we'll see, if we go to have a look at Simon, uh, and he's here. So he's doing an activity, presumably at the stonemasonry. He has these needs. Eat from a plate and not the floor. He's got a house, yeah. And he's got some clothes, presumably. Uh, workplace, he's doing that. Yes, a bit of fabric, he's got that. Oh, like a bathhouse, he wants to wash. Gosh, how terribly, terribly modern. So we're going to meet their needs and level them up which gives us access to bigger and better buildings and stuff, I imagine. Now, if we look at our map here, we're currently 18% completed in our expedition to wherever that is. Uh, the community centre, I don't think, tells you much about that. No, we can't. Uh, this I found slightly confusing, actually. We can upgrade our buildings. So if we go to our first, our first hut here, we can upgrade them to, to more comfortable sleeping. Yeah, uh, uh, more comfort and some tricks. Oh, I say. And space for a pet. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Now, can I go straight to the 40 grass to give them more comfort and tricks? I can. So, okay, so that update is now in progress. Uh, what about actually what I, the, the raw materials are significant so the stone masonry can we upgrade you uh, don't need more storage I don't think efficiently process things better that requires just two stone we should be able to do that that's good well it's active that was easily done good how are we doing with the construction site Okay, oh, we're getting, yeah, we're getting a fair chunk of material delivered. The work preparation is being done slowly. Again, I think that the issue is I don't have any spare people now. They've all got at least one job here. 
can you you can tell on their overview what their job is but it'd be nice if there was a sort of job tab as well so you could see who was doing what jobs so rather than going from the person to the job go the other way around i just it's just a different way pivots the data as it were is that the right phrase i don't know i'm going to use it anyway we're still waiting for the uh, the table lands to be discovered or wherever this is it's gone up to 24 percent now but i just thought i'd take a moment to notice the change in the uh in the environment here we're now in autumn and these are very autumnal looking colors very nice indeed very nice uh, oh i haven't mentioned this mini map down at the bottom here I mean, we, we did sort of mention it but it does other things it's not just the the map of the natural world but it also gives you a heat map yep good uh, shows you where the water is which is handy Presumably that's where we are and also the dirt because people will will th make things dirty it's a natural thing but we could actually build a cesspit I think if we wanted to uh, where oh we could do ooh, look we're at level three aren't we so we could do a farm well pottery there's a cesspit here somewhere is that oh that's probably dairy production cesspit there it is and it actually requires a fair amount of material it's desired for it's required desired it says not required desired for agriculture okay so we could put this in some where should we put this Ooh, don't know where my farm's gonna go my farm might go over here perhaps we could put it out here yeah that's quite a way outside the town isn't it by the river so we can pollute the water courses yeah that'd be good wouldn't it i still don't know if anyone's doing any hunting actually if i go to the store i mean this fish is pro this raw meat is probably fish more than anything else oh we've discovered the table lands oh excellent so that is a table lands okay we need to do a trade agreement open the diplomacy menu and try to negotiate with another faction. Requested and provided goods are stored in the community centre. Uh -huh. Um Okay, so where's diplomacy then? That's a very good question. Is it on the map here? So if I go to Tablelands, that's their community centre. Right. None the wiser. Oh! The letter J or open the journal. Ah, where did we see the journal? That was here. Diplomacy. Right, table lands. Trade agreement is available. Well, I could, could I trade with the, I could trade with the other guys. They are. Oh, okay, I've started something. It's in progress. Okay. Well, let's, let's go back home. Uh, to the hills, to the hills, run to the hills. Oh, this is look oh, he's looking very wintry, apart from the fact it's autumn. Yeah, uh, wet and miserable. Yeah, it could be England in the in the uh, late autumn. Well, in fact, any time of year, almost to be honest. Yeah, whether they did I see lightning just then? Oh, look at those that skyline. Oh, what's that? These new icons. What's what? What are these? Something. Something was happening then. I. Ooh, you see. Yeah, there's obviously little mechanics in the game which aren't yet. To, well, I haven't found documentation for them, so there's no. Uh, then I've got the game running very fast. So. Oh, that looks like storm water. That looked like a. A typhoon kind of symbol, didn't it? If you saw it, I only just briefly saw it in passing. I want that trade agreement to be finished, then we'll wrap this first episode up. How are we doing? 0%. What do you mean 0%? Oh, it's happened. It's happened. We've uh, signed a trade agreement with the Desert Dwellers. Rights of way available. Trade agreement is active. And free trade available. They demand 10 stone blocks for 10 planks. So if we go into our storage, let's move that over there out of the way. We'll get the quests out of the way for the moment. 
and our storage. We do have 12 stone. I assume those stone blocks are the same things as that. We I mean, have got plenty of planks anyway. Now what did it say about the community centre? Delivered, stored. Okay, do we need to... Hmm, not sure. They demand 100 bread for right of way. And we will get 100 cereal grains. I think that's what that means. Marketplace. Uh, needs a community centre, only one per map faction. A place to buy or sell goods. Carty kitchen. Tap. Oh, we've got to have a tap room. Definitely. Uh, the marketplace. Oh, you are. Oh, you're huge. You are. What's this? Your, your brushes and leaves and things. Do you want a marketplace by the cesspit? Possibly not. Or do we want to put it up there by the community centre? Will it go up there? It will, actually. I'm wondering what those X's mean. Does that mean... Uh, that probably means it's removing some existing resources, I imagine. But yeah, let's, let's put that up there. Yeah, we'll extend the road up there. And that is clearly going to take a while. Oh, okay. <laughs> it will take a bit of a while to get going. Anyway, that's where we're going to leave it for the moment, here in Circle of Kazovan. Yes, I think I've got that name right. Yes, it's up there in the top left, if I forget. Excellent. So, the Kickstarter begins, or is launched on May the 30th, 2023. If you'd like to take part in that, if you'd like to support the ongoing development of the game, then head over there. There's a link to that uh, in the description to this video below. Also a link to the Kazovan Discord server and also to their Steam page where you can wishlist the game in preparation for release into early access. Um, I, I'm likely to put, play a couple more of these, I think. See how much further we can go within the demo. If Certainly if you would want to see more, then do let me know either by liking the video or even better by just dropping a comment saying uh, if you obviously spotted things I've done silly wrong or your general views on the game. If you're looking forward to this, if you think it looks interesting enough, something that would appeal to you, if you'd really want to see more of it on the channel, please do just drop a note into the comments box below. That would be awesome. And of course, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, you could do that now. And that way you'll know when I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play series. But from me, Ajax Post, here in Circle of Kazovan. Until the next time, bye bye for now.